Today's episode brought to you with support from Northern Brewer. I've been buying my ingredients and supplies there for 23 years. I'm delighted to have them in support of the program. Check them out at northernbrewer.com. Today on the program, another New Zealand beer. That means for me, when I say it that way, it's uh, using New Zealand hops. I have first started doing this in 2016. I've done several of these and Pale Ale was this first one, IPA, uh, New Zealand IPA with Kvike, New Zealand Pills, and then I did a New Zealand Blonde. I don't know what the difference is. I guess that was an ale type of yeast, but anyway, the hop bill and the grain bill, I'm doing an India Pale Lager today, so New Zealand IPL, so I have this for the grains, I will use a pound of sugar, the hops are going to go like this, I just added the Waiamea, then we have Wakatu and Motuaka, and then I will do a two stage hop stand. With all those, those will all be in the brew log. We are doing a pressurized lager fermentation today. I'm not quite cold enough for regular, normal lager temperatures, but it'll be in the mid-60s probably. We have Imperial Global on deck. Yeast starter in progress. And the boil is rolling. Like I said, I just added the Waimea, and I thought I'd do a quick shot out here. We're getting the fall time is here. It's probably 30 or 40 degrees right now, and the garden is winding down. As you can see, I've taken down the sunflowers. Some of the ditch weed is hanging on for a moment, but this is also some of it. And, uh, but curiously enough, we get a second batch of raspberries on these raspberry plants. So for the last month, I've been picking a handful of raspberries, which is always interesting when it's getting cold out. But otherwise, the bowl is royal rolling. We got to turn that down for the copyright. And I will do, I used to, I have weighed it out, but it comes out to be about two cups. So now I just do two cups at a pound and there you go so just added those but otherwise we've got four more ounces and I am using three different kinds so it is sort of a hodgepodge mix up there's a number of different New Zealand hops you can get these are ones that I found that I like but there's other ones I've used as well Pacific Jade is one that I can't get right now that I've used but hopefully this will do it I don't think there's a need to film every hop addition you all know how to add hops but here is the 45 minute edition it's going to be 14 grams Waka too, just for you. I added my flame out edition. It's been 15 minutes. It's only down to 190. I thought it might be a little lower. As you can see, it's 47 in my garage, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, the point of that is if it's over 180, you still can get a little more bitterness and I'm not trying to make a, a unbalanced bitter beer so hopefully this will all uh, be okay but uh, I guess it will probably cool down a little faster than it would if it was you know 80 <laughs> 90 in the garage 
But yes, we will give this 15 minutes more now that I added two more ounces and then we'll chill it. What a mess. But uh, making progress. It's going to come in in the mid to upper 1060s from the looks of it. I did add the sugar and that's 13 pounds of grain. I would have thought it maybe would be 1070 plus, but um, it's going to be what it's going to be. I did get five gallons, so I boiled some in two pots on the stove for a while. I also boiled it in the garage for 10 minutes before even adding the first hop, so it was about 7.4 gallons down to five, but now it will be a little over after we add this. Whew, that smells good. Good and yeasty. I also did do the pure oxygen because lager yeast, slightly cooler temps, although it is going to be warmer than a pure typical lager fermentation. Um, but, you know, not a bad idea, right? Pure oxygen. Bigger beer, too, so that is uh, helpful. You know, these 1050 beers... Sometimes I'll just pitch the yeast pack, not make a starter, not do the extra aeration. Now I haven't done the pressurized ferment for a while, so I'm going to have to re-figure out how to do the dial and such, but I'm sure we'll get her figured out. Alright, so it's the evening after brew day, so I just brewed this earlier, and I already do have pressure building up. I don't know what it's set at. I'll have to dial in that knob i can do that tomorrow but it's definitely going which we always like to see and it appears to be 61 ish so that's also fine probably officially out of this yeast temperature range but i've got the pressure and uh yeah there we go okay it is the day after brewing and now it's up to about 13 just over 13. I could make it go a little higher. That's 13 psi. I don't think I need to I think it's fine one thing Interesting about this Pressurized fermentation is it's a little cooler than some of them It says 61 the idea is that you can actually ferment it up into the maybe like the upper 60s But uh, you know it is what it is. That's what my room is and it seems to be rolling along, I guess. Tape. Yeah. So we're going to try the India Pale Lager with New Zealand hops. What kind of dates are we looking at? Brewed October 28th. It is December 17th. So can anyone do some math? That's like, what, a couple months almost? 61 days? Yes. Yeah. Past almost, September. Almost two months. August. May and November. Uh, it was 1076 down to 1.009. Woo! Yeah, baby. Uh, Imperial Global Starter, uh, Global Logger with a starter. And uh, yeah, what do we think? It's it's uh, been in the keg a little over a month, so it's had a little time to soften up the edges a little bit. 8.8 percent. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> it's sneaky. So what is the actual lagering period? Just the time in the keg, or was there... Yeah, I mean, okay. I guess. Dunno style? It's been, in the, it's been at cold temps for over a month. You know, like, yeah. whatever. It's got some big old, like, pineapple-y kind of guava. I get a little sulfur, but not too... Like, in a way that actually almost helps in the way that, like, bitterness does on your tongue, yeah. on your nose. The sulfur helps it from being just like fruity sweet. Yeah, that that little tang mm. of sulfur, I don't know whether it's the yeast or the huh. pills malt or whatever, I think that like yeah. that tells me right oh, yeah. away like this isn't an IPA, this is a lager. Right? It's a little salt on the chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like lots maybe of tropical I, hops. Maybe I see what you're saying, but I've never really focused in on that before because I think so many other flavors are so much stronger. Right. That, oh, yeah. Like that would be a real mm -hmm. subtle thing. You'd have to have a real good nose and uh, <laughs> tongue to pick that up. Um, 
You flatter me. These, <laughs> well, you, you always, you always know just what to say. You always left me some. Uh, there's only one ounce of Waimea, and that was bittering. So that, even though I wrote down the descriptors of that hop, probably not a lot of, you know, flavor from that. But then you have all these Wakatua and Motueka. You threw out a couple of so layered things. So too. But I get, for sure, like, um, you're going to get from these New Zealand hops, like the lime mm -hmm. zest. Yeah. Uh, like the zest of any of your citrus fruits with the, the pithiness. Um, also a pine component is yeah. in there. But then I think, like you were kind of, I think you said something like pineapple or something, but there's also like, kind of like a fruit, like I a like mango a fruit character. Acidic fruit. Oh, like a pineapple. Okay. I was even bringing to mind like a fruit cocktail. Right, where you got huh. like pineapple, peaches, maybe some of those yeah. little maraschino type cherries peaches. kind of thing. Considering yeah. that it's 1009, you can be sure that those are coming from hops or esters or whatever versus residual sugar. Yeah. Because it's dried out nice. Yeah, I think the I make these beers a lot of time, and I did this time with one pound, with two cups, so about a pound of white sugar, and I think that that does help <coughs> it uh, just. Yeah, really attenuate well. So for Wakatu, um, it is being bred from the Hallertau hop, uh, which is kind of interesting because you don't think of Hallertau as having like the fruit characteristics, but then it says um, floral aroma atop pungent fresh lime. I think it's the gotta be the Motueka that's getting some of these other flavors. That one is. Um, Bred from Zaz in an unnamed New Zealand breeding strain. So there you go. Um, and it says exciting fruit aroma with refreshing notes of tropical fruit and citrus. So it has a uh, half ounce of Motueka with 15 minutes ago, a half ounce at flame out, and then another full ounce after the first hop stand. So um, I think that one is probably maybe where we're getting more of these fruit characteristics. I'd buy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so drinkable, right? That light, I like light this, body. Yeah. yeah. It's um, a good combination of strong and like an aggressive, you know, level of flavor, mm -hmm. which we all like. We also <clears throat> like the most delicate uh, lagers that are simple, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes fun to just get the you know, a little kick in the teeth with a little nine percent <laughs> big hoppy beer. But it's so well balanced too, right? Like the booze isn't super apparent. The hops aren't like coating the tongue. Like I take a sip and then, oh man, I want more, right? I yeah. think the booze was a more apparent weeks ago mm. um, and that's gonna happen and that's why it's nice like this is probably coming into a good spot now mm -hmm. and probably I mean typically when I've done these types of beers they will drink basically just like this like until it's gone it'll just be at this point I don't know if the lager holds up over time better than an ale but it'll just continue to be good until it's until it runs out well, just, as, as someone that lives down the block from you and gets pulled into your videos a lot, I'm glad that you usually assign yourself at least one IPL a year. It's usually around this time because I feel like you've dialed that in. Over the yeah. last three or four years, you play with different hop combos, but whatever it is between the actual fermentation, the grist, and the sugars, then X amount of hops, I feel like these are some of the beers I look most forward to when you're like, IPL, I'm like... We will be drinking a good bit of that. Yeah. Then, once it's ready to go. Chip said this off camera. Yeah. <laughs> Dono's house is where I look to for good IPL. IPL. Well, thanks, guys. It's always been a, it has been a favorite style. Well, one way or another, one form or another, for many years. And um, yeah. So anyway, a uh, final note is I've said it before and I'll say it again is New Zealand hops. If you've never tried them and you want to try something different, they are a little bit different. They're different than the European ones. They're different, even though they come from mm -hmm. like the heritage. Got some of the genetics. But um, they, they do give you a different result in the aroma and flavor. And uh, 
I am a fan. Does it um, pass the test that you have that when you pour a glass, you can smell it X amount away? I know we've talked about this multiple times um, with packaged beer and keg beer. One of the things with a quote unquote hoppy beer that I think you so. always enjoy is when you can kind of get the waft. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like, as we've done on videos, you pour one of these authentic New England IPAs, mm -hmm. right? And you just like can't believe <laughs> the aroma coming off that. I, I think I would probably have to do other hopping techniques, like yeah. maybe primary fermentation, <clears throat> maybe dry hopping, and yeah. I haven't done that with this. The lager so, itself probably suppresses on the aroma till it gets into over your palate. But I, I think feel like I get a good There's bit some of it. aroma, yeah. but um, n not just, just like ripping. I just wanted to ask because you have this funny. Kind of like when that takes a box, you're like, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I can smell it from over there. Sometimes yes. my beers come out that way and sometimes not, but I will admit I don't do a lot of extra steps to just go for a strong aroma. Other than the hop stand technique, which I, mm -hmm. for, which I think does impart some. I want to thank Northern Brewer for supporting this episode. They supplied the ingredients and I am thankful for that and I am... Um, Happy with how this beer came out. I'm uh, happy that you have more of it to share. I have sort of a uh, Christmas adjacent uh, shirt on. It's like a grandpa shirt. This uh, gold wig. And he I got the memo. He does too. <laughs> it's a coincidence. So yeah, that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. He wins. Catch you later. Always wins. I usually win. Unless I'm the one doing all the talking.